motion town. Come around and see how it all goes down. Think a ride with me through the motion town. Choosing a great vehicle in the midsize class has never been an easy one. There are always lots of options to consider. However, if you want technology, luxury and respect neatly wrapped in a midsize luxury sedan, then you should have a good look at the Audi A6. This is not the car to buy when you want to unleash your inner child. No disrespect to the BMW guys, yes, this is the car for accomplished growing up. In this episode, we also have the sportier, slightly aggressive and younger cousin of the Audi, the Volkswagen CC, driven by my grumpier, slightly aggressive and somewhat on hedgecore presenter, David. The Volkswagen CC is a handsome, competent car that's ideal for those who probably can afford a Mercedes CLS or simply just want to drive something more stylish than a BMW 5 Series. Again, no offense to the BMW folks. The name was changed after the first generation from the Passat CC to just the CC. The badge may have changed, but the CC is still a comfortable sports sedan that sometimes makes you feel you're in a jet plane cockpit. Audi has designed the A6 with a slightly, emphasis on slightly, angrier look, you know, in this edition. Uh, it sports a lot of angle design around the headlights and the massive grille. And this angle design continues all the way to the back with the tail lights. Overall, the car still manages to remain stately and quite elegant. And if you think about it, the Audi A6 is a solid, very, very solid entry into the mid-size luxury sedan market. So if you compare it to the other cars in the class, like the Lexus sedans and all that here, it is handsome without being boastful. And unlike the BMW uh, 5 Series, it is powerful without being aggressive. And unlike the Mercedes E-Class Series, well, let's just say that it is luxurious without being blinked out like a Lagos Ronska. So I like the interior of the A6 very much. I mean, it's got a lot of soft touch material, you know, really nicely well designed and it's got really nice aluminum trim. So it shows you in a luxury sedan. With Audi A6, there's the usual suspect, which is a beautifully designed uh, navigation screen. You've got Bluetooth connectivity and then you've got a, you know, really nice uh, stereo. Well, there's this really interesting feature here, this knob that allows you to interact with the car's computer and the entertainment system. It also, you know, doubles as a scratch pad so you can actually scratch um, letters when you're entering um, addresses into the navigation. It kind of makes me wonder who would want to spend the whole afternoon trying to scratch A, B, C, I mean, didn't you leave that back in primary school or something? Uh, yeah, you probably would have seen such a feature in the BMW or maybe in the Lexus, but in the Audi A6, it kind of fits really perfect. Yeah, it's kind of really balanced, yeah? So, in the back, you're still reminded, you're in a luxury sedan. You know, the materials here still speak very premium luxury, and the space around your legs still says luxury, which is good. But you know what I find perfect sitting behind here, apart from appreciating the car from behind here, is the fact that I see this armrest as excellent. You know why? It can hold a Coke or a Pepsi, or any other product we get for product placement. Well guys, I've got a VW CC, formerly called the Passat. Um, straight away from the way you look at the vehicle, it's quite, comes across very aggressive. It's a four-door sedan, but can be mistaken for a two-door coupe because of its slick styling and the way it's been designed. This particular model comes with 18-inch alloy wheels, multi-spoke, it's factory fit tint glass on the back of the screen and on the side of the vehicle. It comes with a panoramic sunroof, it's got its integrated uh, indicators, LED also, and replaced LEDs on the back of the vehicle for its indicators and stoplights. It comes with xenon lights and daytime running lights as standard on this model. When you drive along in this vehicle, 
the first thing you realise is how quiet it is. It's a silent vehicle. Uh, engine noise is, is very limited. Suspension is very nice as well. It's got a very sturdy suspension. Kind of vehicle you want to take on a really long trip and just uh, lay back, put on cruise control and just enjoy the drive. The downside to that is that on the rear of the vehicle you have less headroom. This vehicle uh, doesn't come with a reverse camera but comes with an optical parking system. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how the cookie crumbled with David's drive review of the Volkswagen CC. I did say he was slightly unhinged. Emphasis on slightly. So this car is a turbocharged 2.0 litre. Uh, it cranks about 252 brake horsepower and there's a 3.0 litre option which gives you about 333 brake horsepower. Of course, there's the diesel versions which vary in power and uh, torque uh, uh, figures, but I'm not going to focus on that because we don't really drive diesels down here. There's the V8 option somewhere in there though, but I think you really need to be close to Yabalet type of insanity to consider, you know, buying one of those. Um, I'll give you a hint. If you live in Lagos and you've experienced the kind of traffic that we face on a daily basis, and more importantly, if you've experienced the new, uh, the new petrol prices, then I would advise you to get the 2.0 litre. It's actually fantastic. There are four drive modes in this car. You've got Comfort, you've got Auto, you've got um, Dynamic and Individual. Uh, comfort, you know, as it sounds, it makes you drive really comfortably. Uh, dynamic is more responsive. Auto would allow the car to decide for itself how to perform in terms of right comfort and responsiveness based on how you're driving and the terrain that you're on. And individual will allow you to set individual parameters so you can have a personalized experience as much as possible. Well, I've been driving around in comfort mode and I can tell you it's quite nice. I like it, you know. it's. Um, it's buttery smooth, like, you know, butter and hot toast. Very lovely. And if you really work hard to earn your money and not getting it by those tainted Ghana must go back some you know who, then this is the mode you really would love to be driven in. But then again, let's see what Dynamic has to offer. Yeah, so it's time to transform. Dynamic Engage. Oh God, now we have traffic in front of me. How do we... Well, get out. Oh. your average BMW youthful exuberance aggressiveness this is a more matured oh I've got power oh I love this nice nice if only I can get rid of traffic get out of my way let's just say dynamic is truly what it is that's responsiveness without feeling like you're gonna kill yourself like I said, I think I mentioned it before. Audi is not for your youthful exuberance, I want to show off kind of person. It's for the person who feels accomplished. It's a reward for hard work. It is important to note that this episode was not a direct comparison of these two cars. This was a good look at two excellent sedans. One for the accomplished man or woman with no midlife crisis and the other for the working professional who likes to work hard and play hard.